back to the bars, you can see some local trends around the place there. iPhone 5, of course, because we know that it's now going to be coming out somewhere in the middle of September. Moving right along, uh, we, uh, we, we want to do some more of these uh, these app review sort of things that we do, but social media is something that we really want to focus on. Definitely. How do we keep ourselves safe when we're using things like Facebook and, and Twitter and things like that? Well, it's, it's getting very difficult because you know Facebook privacy hasn't been all that crash hot over, since it was created, but they are definitely trying to introduce some things that you know make it a, a lot safer for us to use. Now, um, We've all had it happen. We've been to a friend's house or at an internet cafe or at work and we've signed into our Facebook and we've closed the application and left our Facebook logged in <laughs> only to get yes. face jacked and somebody changes our relationship status to divorce. We've or suddenly become gay. We've suddenly become gay <laughs> or, or if you're already gay, perhaps you become straight. Anyway, the point is it's a very unpleasant experience and there is a way to uh, log yourself out of these places without having to physically go to a so computer. So it's like a remote logout? It is a remote ah. It's exactly what it is. Now, I've got my Facebook page up at the moment. What you want to do is uh, just to the right, next to your home button is a downwards arrow and you want to click on account settings. Now, once you've got to account settings, depending on how quickly it gets there, you want to click to your left on security. And once you're there, at the very bottom here, it's got active sessions. Now, click on edit, and it should show you. Uh, oh, gosh, it will, <laughs> eventually. <laughs> Not having a lot of luck tonight, guys. Um, it should show you all the different sessions that you've got. Here we go. Ah. Um, so, I've left all these open. I actually checked this and deleted all the, the wrong ones that I didn't do myself a week ago, and already there's about 10 up. Now, I know one of them is my iPhone, one is my iPad, one is my work computer, and one is my laptop, but the rest of them I've got no idea. So, you want to probably oh, do right. this quite often. Now, uh, here we go, unknown location on Chrome, end activity, there we go, it's gone. And that's how you get rid of your session. We've also got a secure browsing thing that you can do, which is good because people can hack you on your Wi-Fi mm. if you're logged into Facebook via a public Wi-Fi network. Oh, so this it forces you to use secure HTTP? It does. Ah. So if you've got HTTPS at the beginning, it means it's a secure browsing session. Um, now, if you want to get this enabled, go to secure browsing, click on edit, and then just tick on uh, a Browse Facebook on a secure connection when possible. Tick right. that, save changes, done. Safe. Thank you very much, Nikita Dixon, as always, the review. expert <laughs> on everything that comes to social media. Now, if you want to become an expert in firing weapons, where would you go? You might try YouTube, for example. <laughs> Now, it's been a little while since I've had to learn how to reassemble an AK-47, but clearly, <laughs> if you do need to know, you can just go to YouTube. Paul, it seems here that, and this particular video appears to come from Syria, Syrians training people to go and be terrorists? <laughs> well, uh, apparently supporters of the Free Syrian Army, the rebel group fighting against Syria's ruling Assad regime, have uploaded a series of gun training videos and tutorials to YouTube. So the idea is nice. you're fighting in the streets, uh, maybe you're not au fait with how to you know, rebuild and clean out a machine gun. Uh, so you can quickly go to YouTube, check, oh, that's right, the barrel comes off that that's way. Right. Clean it up, that's how I shoot more people. Uh, now, of course, it's getting a lot of attention. It, this is a very contentious issue in not only social media, but the entire world. But of course, the suspicion is that it wasn't actually filmed in Syria. Uh -huh. uh, it may have actually been filmed in some other countries who may have a bit of a vested interest in seeing the right. free Syrian army have a bit more success. Australia. Right. No? Uh, no. Not Australia. Uh, of course it's not Australia. But, you know, countries that we're very friendly with. So, yeah, so it's an interesting uh, change of events, I guess, mm. in the war and the way that social media is, uh, is being uh, used within this conflict. And I look forward to our own civil war uh, having some training videos up, along with a survival guide, I think. Thank that's you right. very much, Mr. Cook. All right, uh, moving you. right along. If you take a look Thank at the hashtag know, hash know, Twitter joke know. trial, this is actually a very, very interesting example of where... I guess the old way of doing things has met up with the new way of doing things. Unfortunately, this particular gentleman made a tweet which, if you look at it in retrospect, none of us would ever say it was a particularly menacing sort of tweet. Unfortunately, the police and the Crown Prosecuting Service over in the UK decided differently and decided they were going to try and prosecute this guy for making what was, in actual fact, a really bad joke about blowing an airport up because uh, it wasn't doing what it was meant to do. And who hasn't wanted to blow an airport up? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that or I'm going to get in trouble as well. But look, the bottom line is we now have an example of 
Twitter talk that has gone to court and a precedent has been set. Well, Paul Chambers is his name. He's a 28-year-old guy from Northern Ireland and he was found guilty of sending a menacing electronic communication. Was he? Uh, tweeting that he was going to blow up uh, something at Robin Hood Airport after some heavy snow. However, that conviction was quashed. Quashed. So he took it back to he court. He was so, very lucky as well. Yeah, originally he, he was convicted, but, but not anymore. However, if you were to write it on a piece of paper and stick it in a seat in the plane, totally that would different. still be a crime. So interesting. It's all about context, really, isn't it? Uh, Twitter joke trial means comedians will feel more secure tweeting jokes and people making threats will try to work in some humour. It's win-win. <laughs> or maybe not. Yeah, maybe uh, not. Alright, now uh, things have been happening around the place. London being what it is, we all know that there's been riots in London as well. But how do we sort of bring the riots together with the Olympics? You know, we don't want London to look too bad. Take a look at this.